Hi, today we're here to do a comparison between CAR analysis and logistic regression models by looking at both techniques to predict male fertility rates. The most important result we found is that CAR analysis works best locally, whereas logistic regression works best globally. That is, while our CAR analysis was very good in predicting the outcomes for our data set, it was difficult to extrapolate beyond that population. Logistic regression, on the other hand, was able to do that much more easily. Before we explain our analysis, we will first give you an overview of card analysis. Card analysis, or categorical and regression tree, is a recursive tree building technique that is used to identify interactions between explanatory variables. There are four main components, tree building, tree stopping, pruning, and testing. And to understand CART, it is essential to understand these four techniques. Card analysis begins with the process known as tree building. To begin constructing the tree, we would begin with a root node that contains the entire population of the data set. Within this population, the CART software checks all of the possible splitting variables using a genie or Tuing splitting function. These functions then identify the best splitting variable and partition the population into two child nodes. From each of these child's nodes, this process then continues for each successive child node until stopping. Since the tree building process cannot continue indefinitely, we must impose three stopping criteria. First, we can impose an external depth limit that specifies a certain number of partitions of the set. In the example below, we have set a limit of two. Notice that after the first two partitions, we could still split the variables by case, but this would exceed our depth restriction. The second stopping criteria is identical distribution of predictor variables. In our example here, we notice that we cannot separate this group any further. Lastly, if we only have one observation in a node, we cannot split the data any further. Unfortunately, once CART meets its stopping requirements, the resulting model is likely to be overfit because it too closely follows the nuances of the original data set. In order to make the CART analysis more robust, we must cut down or prune the tree to make it simpler. We do this by using a cost complexity pruning model that begins at the terminal node and seeks to balance the complexity of the tree with the accuracy of the prediction. To assure the robustness of our model, we must then test the data set in one of two different ways. First, we can test the model against an entirely new data set and determine how accurately our previous model predicts the outcomes of the new population. This new data set, however, is often hard to come by or costly to produce so we can also check the model internally by performing a cross-validation procedure. The cross-validation procedure splits the test population into n distinct subgroups and uses each individual group to test against the remaining n minus 1 groups. The average performance of these n models turns out to be an excellent predictor of the original model's performance. We found our data set on UCI's machine learning repository where we saw a fertility data set that caught our attention. It had 99 data points from 99 volunteers providing semen samples, which were then analyzed by WHO standards to determine if they were of normal or altered quality. The data set also provided other variables such as the season during which a sample was collected, the age of the subject, if they had any diseases during childhood, if they experienced any trauma, and if they had surgical interventions, as well as if they had high fever during the last year, and the frequency of their alcohol and smoking habits, and finally how many hours a day they spent sitting. The original article sought to use these articles to predict seminal quality via CART analysis, and we were inspired by it to do a comparison running our own CART analysis on the data set and comparing the decision tree that came from it with the model produced by running a logistic regression. In the following slides, we will encounter our models. Here is the CART model that we produced with our data set. To interpret the tree, we begin at the first node. Notice that each node corresponds to one of two levels of a response variable, normal or altered. The middle two decimals in each node represent the percentage of individuals in each node that are correctly classified, and the bottom percentage is percentage of original population. The first node, for example, contains 100% of the population and classifies them all as normal. This is, of course, wrong because we have individuals with altered semen samples in our population, so our middle two decimals take this into account by telling us that we have incorrectly identified 12% of the samples in this node. We see then that the CART identifies three variables, age, trauma, and hours sitting as the best predictors for a normal or altered semen sample, 
and the data did a pretty good job of predicting these outcomes, with 88% of the samples being concordant pairs. Note that the trauma variable works slightly counterintuitively. Based on our model, if you have had some sort of trauma and are over the age of 24, you are likely to have a normal semen sample. This runs counter to the results for a logistic regression and could be a result of our inability to test our model on a different data set. We will further discuss the limitations of our analysis in the conclusion section. So now that we have seen our CART analysis, we can then look at the logistic regression portion of our comparison. To find the most parsimonious model, we first ran a logistic regression on all the variables to determine which were worth performing drop and deviance tests on. This was our full model, and as you can see, it involves many variables, and although the p-values are not shown, not many were significant. As you can see on the slide, the full model has a fairly high g-score and the p-value was insignificant. We are further concerned about this model seeing as the Pearson's chi-squared yielded a significant p-value, meaning that the model had a poor fit. However, as we note the concordant and discordant pairs, this model actually has a pretty high percentage of successful predictions. As we continue to find a more parsimonious model which has a more comparable variable count to that of the CART analysis, we conducted many drop-in deviance tests. Finally, we arrived at this logistic regression model which has four variables that were significant or very close to significance. This model has a p-value of 0.022 as well as a Pearson chi-square p-value of 0.862, which suggests that this has a good fit. However, as you can see, the percentage of concordant pairs decreased from the previous full model's 82.8% to a 73.8%, although it is important to keep in mind that this was a trade-off of having a simpler model. There are many advantages to using CART analysis, the most useful one being its ability to handle non-parametric data. This allows us to conduct analysis on highly skewed multimodal data sets and not have to check if the model assumptions are being met. CART analysis can also be used to analyze both quantitative as well as categorical data, whereas logistic regression can only handle categorical data and linear regression can only handle quantitative data. Therefore, using CART analysis saves a lot of time and is useful for conducting an analysis on large, messy data sets. CART analysis is also easy to run and easy to interpret, making it a very useful technique when trying to communicate results to non-statisticians. One problem to watch out for when using CART analysis is overfitting the data. Since it is hard to know when it is appropriate to stop splitting a tree, it might be tempting to add additional nodes to make the model more precise. This, however, makes the analysis less robust, as this analysis will then be tailored to the specific data set being used. Statisticians are also hesitant when they use card analysis due to how new the technique is and due to the poor performance of tr previous tree-based methodologies. Therefore, when trying to decide between using logistic regression and card analysis, it may be useful to keep certain things in mind. Logistic regression is better than card analysis when the size of the data set is small. Card analysis, however, is more efficient when dealing with large, messy data sets. It may also be useful to keep in mind the audience to which the analysis is being presented to. Card analysis may be more useful when presenting to non-statisticians, while logistic regression may be preferred when presenting to statisticians. However, both techniques are highly complementary and could be used together to conduct robust tests that are easy to communicate. We try and compare the two different techniques by looking at the number of concordant pairs in each. We find that the highest number of concordant pairs is in card analysis, with 88% of the pairs being concordant. We then have the full logistic regression model with 83% of the pairs concordant. In the reduced logistic regression model, we find that 74% of the pairs are concordant. Therefore, we have some evidence to show that card analysis was more useful than the logistic regression in this specific study. To conclude, we want to reiterate that card analysis worked best on our data set, whereas we have statistically significant evidence that logistic regression works best for the entire population. Like we had mentioned previously, we were not able to test our CART model against another data set to assess its robustness, so we have no indication of how well it works universally. Since logistic regression is a parametric test, we can infer that it can be used on other populations and will predict similar outcomes. If, however, we were able to test our CART model on another data set, then we may be able to have a more accurate global predictor.